Well, I'm not saying that a larger knife for survival specific tasks is always the better knife to go for or is always the right choice. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a very compelling larger survival knife, a kind of chopper, if you will, and going over talking about what honestly might be one of the best value options and kind of comparing it with some knives. Now, granted, there are gonna be some very expensive survival knives here, but um, these are gonna be some of the larger kind of six and a half plus inch blade length um, survival knives. So these are gonna be knives that are going to be more focused on potential use as a one tool option. Once again, it's always better to have, you know, like saws, hatchets, whatever, or what have you, but sometimes you can realistically only have a knife or the knife just is the best jack of all trades, right? And so we're gonna be looking at, you know, larger survival knives here and kind of comparing one that I think is a very compelling option in a recent addition, at least to my collection, and that is the Veristil like a scrama. Now I've talked about and broken down all the various Stalika knives I have and I have a handful but uh, the scrama is probably my favorite of them all and I think when it comes to price comparison it is probably the best. As I've mentioned in other videos like the Taravi Yakari Puko there's a lot of other really good options in that price point and so while the Yakari Puko is good you know the Cold Steel SRK is also really good and so are a handful of other knives right but when it comes to larger knives on a budget I think the Scrama is probably one of the best options that you can get and once again I'll be breaking that down here. So like I said this is the Tarava, Tarava. This is the Verisalika Scrama. Now, this is the 210 millimeter. You can get a 240 millimeter that's a little bit larger than this, but I think the 210, you know, really hits that just over seven inch length. So it gives you the ability to use this functionally as a knife, you know, really choke in close. Do, you know your feather sticks your very close tasks notching and stuff like that with the back of the blade and then moving up to the front portion of the blade and getting really good striking force and power now as i've also mentioned in other videos the scrama is kind of its own amalgam but it is a very similar blade shape and style to something like the parang machetes and so this is definitely a knife definitely thicker than a typical parang machete but it gives you that similar reverse blade point so you are going to get um, extra kind of cutting length functionally when you're striking or when you're chopping so gives you that kind of very end tip advantage for doing tasks at the tip. Um, so that definitely is an advantage to this knife in blade shape as well, but also the price point in the material. So you're getting a Bolteron rubberized handle, which is going to be very grippy when it's wet, when it's cold, it is going to be very functional. It's also full tang, which is worth noting, but so are every other knife here. So it's not a necessarily super unique function um, of this blade. And you are also getting 80 CRV2, which for the price point, as I've mentioned, especially for a chop knife, I really don't mind. 80 CRV2 is going to be a pretty darn tough blade steel for um, chopping tasks. Essentially, as I've mentioned in other videos, 80 CRV2 is essentially like 1083 Crovan. So you're getting a tougher, better edge retentioned version of 1083, which as we'll talk about with other knives here, isn't half bad. All of this is coming in too at about 80 bucks. So you're looking at about a 70 to $80 knife right here. And if you get something like just the blade cover so you can carry this in a backpack, you're really not going to be paying that much money. So first off, the first competitive option is going to be the Rat 7. Now, like I said, this is a larger blade. So the Rat 7 is a little bit smaller as you guys can see there. And so definitely depending on what your wants are or your interests for using the blade, the Scrama is going to be better. In addition to this, the Rat 7 has more of that traditional um, kind of clip point or drop point style for your tip. So it's not going to be as good at chopping. And these guys are actually a about the same in blade thickness. Now, the Rat 7 is actually a little bit cheaper than the Scrama. The Rat 7 is about a $60 knife when you can find them. But uh, for what you're getting here, it's also a decent option. Now, it's worth noting these modern Rat 7s are or were made in 1075 high carbon. So you're going to get, you know, a little bit less edge retention than 80 CRV2. So, you know, in this case, you know, traditionally, the lower the cost, you get what you pay for, right? Now, the Rat 7 is probably going to be a little bit better for your knife specific tasks, but this is a very interesting category of knife because once you start to step up into these larger knives, um, it becomes very realistic running something like a companion neck knife with any of the knives mentioned here 
here, I would probably recommend doing so because with most of these knives, um, even with the fact that you can choke up on the forward finger choil to get a little bit closer, you're still dealing with a pretty big knife. So the Rat7 is the first one up on the list. Now let's talk about the next one. So once again, sticking with, you know, more budget optioned knives, the closest in price point is, and is actually bigger, is the RTAC 2. Now, unfortunately, Ontario Knife Company, the maker of the Rat 7 and the RTAC 2, is kind of going through some repositioning in life. Their machinery and stuff has been bought out by other companies and stuff. So it'll be interesting to see if the RTAC 2 really comes back. But the RTAC 2 is about a $100 knife, I want to say, and uh, it is definitely a bit bigger now. Now, if you got the 240 millimeter Scrama, it would be closer. It's still not as big as the RTAC 2, but the RTAC 2 is a beefy knife, or not necessarily beefy because the thickness isn't super thick, but it is a big boy. So you guys can see there, definitely probably a little bit better for chopping. The handle's just absolutely massive, and you guys can see like, this is fun to actually have a knife that's you know, similar, tries to be the same size. It's not like the RTAC 2. You can see that the RTAC 2 is just absolutely huge. It's like a 15, I want to say, inch overall length blade. So it is no joke. But um, for the knife itself, it's not super expensive. But getting it sheathed can be a little bit more expensive too. I have a custom Kydex sheath for my RTAC 2. That definitely makes it a little bit more expensive um, as a whole package. But overall, this guy definitely offers some good value. But the Scrama, I would say, is still a, probably a little bit better at actually end chopping. But I don't know, I'd let you guys be the judge of that one. But overall, it is a valiant option. Now let's talk about some more expensive options that I also have in the collection. And this is where you get to see the overall size and materials and performance really shine. So the first one up is going to be the AK or Architect Knives 6.5. Now once again, a smaller knife, you know, this is going to be smaller because it's um, bigger, this guy's bigger than a seven inch blade, but you guys can see there that this is a pretty decent overall offering, um, the Scrama here, because uh, its size and value option because the AK 6.5, while definitely a you know decent price pointed knife for a larger survival knife, is still coming in at about $180. So um, in my opinion, this one is still a decent choice because it's still CPM 3V and you're getting you know really nice micarta handles. This is a well put together knife, but the Scrama does offer a very compelling choice if you're trying to get into a larger knife on the budget. All right, moving up to the next one. This is the uh, Bark River Knives Strike Force 2. It is a beautiful knife, but around a $300 knife. And uh, that's partly due to these, you know, burl handles, these Thulia burl wood handles and the mosaic pins and all that stuff. But you guys can see they're definitely a bit bigger than the Strike Force 2. Strike Force 2 tries, but uh, yeah, it's definitely bigger. We'll say the cool thing about the Strike Force 2, you get a little bit of that recurve in there. So it definitely can be helpful with you know like um, your more fine tooth tasks like doing things like feather sticking but it still isn't quite enough and then lastly we have the venerable Chris Reeve Knives Pacific and uh, this one's awesome absolutely one of my go-to's but you can see that this is about a $400 ish knife and uh, you can see that that is dwarfing it Scrama 2 is pretty darn big. So that uh, gives you guys a good idea of the Scrama 210, at least in its size and how it stacks up. And once again, you know, this is an $80 knife that is offering a pretty darn good value for what it is. And especially if you're going to be using it for chopping, like I said, I'm not the largest fan of ADCR V2 in super expensive knives. And uh, my one kind of exception to that is in chopping because ADCR V2 is a good high per higher performance chopping steel. And what I mean by that is CPM 3V is probably the next choice up in my opinion, but uh, when you're chopping with a knife, there's going to be a lot of shock. There's going to be a lot of force going into that blade. So if you have a steel that is something like VG10, if you have something that's um, non-high carbon, you're likely going to be running into chipping, breaking. Um, and even with high carbon that's unsupported or you know things like 1095 can be very prone to rolling. So that kind of 1083 crow van, essentially like the ADCR V2 is, definitely helps give you a little bit better edge retention, a little bit 
better shock resistance and it still keeps the knife pretty darn affordable most of the time. So um, this guy, like I said, the Scrama 210 is a pretty awesome option. I'm actually pretty excited to get it out into the woods and see how it performs in comparison because a lot of knives in this range, as you guys can see, are more traditional like clip point, drop point, um, spear point, or um, you know, these more standardized edges. So it's very interesting to get a knife that's more of kind of like a small parang style blade. So that's what I'm excited for with the Scrama, but I do think like hopefully you guys can see here that it is a really decent value option. And I think when it comes to the competitive options of something like the Scrama, the Scrama tends to hold its own. Things like I said, like the Taravi Yukari Puko, there's a lot of really venerable blades in this guy's uh, kind of like knife range. And so the um, Yukari Puko is not a bad knife by any means. It's not like a poor, you know, poorly made knife or anything like that. But there's also a lot of other not poorly made knives in its kind of price range. So its competitive offering is a little bit less than the Scrama in my opinion. So I think the Scrama is definitely worth checking out if you guys haven't checked one out already. Um, you do unfortunately have to order them from Ferris Salaika's website. You can't go and like buy them on Amazon or sometimes you might find one on eBay, but they're always wildly overpriced there. So, you know, your best bet is just to go straight to the source and buy one from them. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this uh, kind of deep dive into the Scrama and its competitive offerings at least in my collection. Obviously, there are other knives that I don't own, but uh, definitely let me know what you guys would choose in the comment section below. And if I'm missing any other knife that's a good competitive offering to the Scrama, also let me know in the comment section below. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.